From the headquarters of Telesur English in Quito, Ecuador, I am Estefania Bravo. This is From the South. The Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Motley, is calling on Barbadians to stay the course as she delivers her first, her first budget in the Parliament. Establishing economic growth and lowering the personal income tax would be the highlights of the fiscal package. In her presentation, Motley stressed that government cannot transform Barbados' economy until there is growth. She also, she also assured that she would continue cutting expenses while still investing in education and health care. Last year, the IMF and the government of Barbados agreed on a $219 million economic assistance plan. When I use these words, Brexit has curbed the enthusiasm for travel among our most largest source market. The OECD has forced us to abandon a 30-year-old separation of tax rates between the domestic and the international business sector. Guns have poured into this country in the last five years and we now have a problem, as I said, with gun crime not previously seen before. Barbadians are naturally weary. And I have come this evening to say to you that you need not be. Let us stay the course because your government got this. As of today, our reserves have risen from just over the 400 million that they were when we inherited them at the end of May. Last year, at its lowest point, it was actually down to 300 and change in March. But as of 400 million odd we inherited, today our reserves stand at $1.1 billion. I am told by my economic advisors that we shall hit that 15-week import cover in the next few days on current trajectory. In Ecuador, the Citizens Revolution Movement has formally asked the National Assembly to investigate a corruption case against President Lenin Moreno. Our correspondent, Denise Herrera, has the details. We are outside the National Assembly in Quito, where the lawmaker of the Citizen Revolution Movement, Amapola Naranjo, was meeting a new legal action against the Assembly President, Elizabeth Cabezas, after a telephone conversation was reveal where the interior minister Maria Paula Romo and the assembly president Elizabeth, Elizabeth Cabezas were trying to stop the creation of a commission to investigate Moreno corruption case. So now the citizen revolution movement are asking formally to the governing board of the national assembly to investigate this case and also to create a commission that allows to reveal the truth about this corruption case. So We'll, we'll see if this governing board of the National Assembly, which is held by the President of the Assembly, can uh, open a file to investigate this case. Thank you, Denise. And here's Ecuadorian lawmaker Emma Pola Naranjo's response to the new investigation. It is not normal that the National Assembly's role be manipulated and obstructed. The Gran Mapuche demonstration has taken place in Temuco and Santiago, Chile. They demanded an end to the militarization of Mapuche territory. They also commemorated the young Camilo Catrillanca, who was murdered four months ago at the hands of Carabineros. The mobilization's aim was to reassert the historic rights of the Mapuche people. Teachers are striking in Colombia to demand to the government to resolve the economic crisis in the education sector. Unions announced that 280,000 teachers were joining the national strike, affecting more than 8 million students across the country. They are also protesting against the National Development Plan pushed by President Ivan Duque, which is contemplating budget cuts for the education sector. Our correspondent, Tatiana Portela, was at the march with the latest. Teachers are mobilizing in Bogota to protest against the government of Ivan Duque and his policies regarding public education. 
Demonstrators have announced they are taking part in a 48 hours national strike in cities across the country, especially in Cartagena, Barranquilla, Medellín and Cali. In the Guajira department, teachers have announced they are extending their strike to 72 hours. Teachers are demanding the National Development Plan to be suspended since they say this is only affect the world of teachers and its stability. They are also demanding that the budget for public education is being revised and that corruption is being tackled. They are also supporting the demonstrations against the killing of social leaders and the repression of demonstrations in the Cauca department. We will keep you updated as this demonstration continues. We think that the NFR that report tensions are rising in the Cauca department south of Colombia as clashes between social movements and security forces continue to be reported. One police officer was reportedly killed and seven others were injured during a confrontation. The incident is yet to be clarified. Indigenous communities, campesinos and Afro-descendant people have been protesting for over a week for their right to own land. Demonstrators have denounced the use of excessive force by security forces. Life has returned to normal for Venezuelans who were affected after an attack on the country's power grid. Electricity was fully restored on the 13th of March after intensive efforts by the power company's engineers to restore power. During the outage, the government, worker, the government worked round the clock to provide food, water and other necessities to the citizens. Our Venezuela tried the best to guarantee the supply of food. Our president also provided us emergency food. You can see here, we're keeping fighting. There is no other way. But the Western media are saying we are starving. No, we are in need of supplies, mainly medicine. But there is no case of starving to death because of lack of food. I can promise. Let's go now to Zimbabwe. Residents of Chimanimani in Eastern have started cleaning away the rubble and sorting through what little they have left in the aftermath of Cyclone Idai. Chimanimani was among the worst hit areas with more than 100 houses being completely destroyed by heavy rains, mudslides and raging winds. The cyclone also washed away crops, ripped bridges and brought massive sinkholes that swallowed up roads. Strong winds have prevented military rescue helicopters from reaching some of the most affected areas. Chief executive, they've been reporting false information. Our district administrator and the chief executive have been reporting false information. Yesterday, we buried 42 bodies and more graves are being manually dug, now with hoes. We are just mobilizing ourselves as a community, and we have not received financial help from the government. We requested helicopters, as many as 10, but we only got one which had a problem and did not do much. It only rescued two people from the clinic. Meanwhile, survivors are filling up hospitals as rescue teams continue looking for people stranded on trees and rooftops. At least 98 people have been confirmed dead, while more than 200 are still missing. Officials fear the final death toll will be in the thousands. Residents in Beira, Mozambique have started to clean after deadly cyclone die. Powerful cyclone winds and flooding killed hundreds of people and left a massive trail of destruction. Roads in and around Beira are swamped, complicating rescue efforts and had to be flown in by helicopter or plane. My husband and our family are there. There is no way to save them, all of them. The rescue team told us to get inside the helicopter, but all our relatives stayed there. We'll be back very soon. Stay with us. Welcome back. Haiti's Prime Minister John Henry Sant will have his say in the Senate after a majority of lawmakers in the lower house voted to remove him from the position. Sant is expected to respond to the vote against him. He was not present when the move was taken on Monday and has refused to accept his dismissal, insisting that he is still heading the government. He has described the vote as illegal and unconstitutional. Some senators still regard Sant as Prime Minister, saying that the Senate takes a precedence in this matter. 
Guyana's Elections Commission says fresh general elections cannot be held until November 2019. In a letter to the president, the commission chairman indicated that it would not be in a position to conduct polls before the date. Fresh elections are constitutionally due no later than 90 days after last December's no confidence motion against the government. Opposition leader Bharat Jagdio has said that from March 21st, his People's Progressive Party will consider the government illegal. St. Lucia's Prime Minister Anne Chestnut is one of five Caribbean leaders expected to hold talks with U.S. President Donald Trump this weekend. Our correspondent in St. Lucia, Alyssa Kentnish, has more. St. Lucia's Prime Minister Alan Chastney will join his Jamaican counterparts Andrew Holness and the leaders of the Bahamas, the Dominican Republic and Haiti in a sit-down with U.S. President Donald Trump this weekend. In a statement, the White House confirmed that the meeting is set for Friday, March 22nd at Mar-a-Lago, that is President Trump's resort in Florida. And uh, according to the statement, Trump's meeting with the Caribbean leaders will reaffirm his strong friendship and commitment to those countries and signal the importance of the Caribbean to this hemisphere. It confirmed that Venezuela is down for discussion, stating that the president will speak to the leaders on developments in that country. Now the U.S. continues to support opposition leader Juan Guaido and they are urging their diplomatic allies to follow suit. The talks will also focus on China's growing influence in the Caribbean and Washington has already warned that it will counter China's economic practice in the region and it should not come as a big surprise to many that St. Lucia's leader is part of the talks as even before entering office in June 2016 he warned that his foreign policy agenda would differ greatly to that of his predecessor Prime Minister Dr. Kenny Anthony who embraced the Latin American and Caribbean alliance and in 2017 Chastney told the media that as far as financing for development is concerned his new model of diplomacy would be less about ALBA and more about leaning towards traditional allies like the United States and Canada. And while St. Lucia has not broken ranks with CARICOM's long-standing and united front of non-interference and non-intervention in Venezuela, the country continues to call for fresh elections in Venezuela. And just to put things in perspective, last year, President Trump received severe backlash by including Haiti in a group of countries he referred to as, quote, shithole countries, end quote. He later stated that he was simply referring to the fact that Haiti is a poor and troubled country. The White House says that Friday's meeting will also explore energy, investment, and security cooperation. That was Alison Kentnish from St. Lucia. A religious service has been held at the Brazilian school where two former students gunned down eight people last week. Six boys, a teacher and an administrator were killed in the attack. And although Brazil has the world's highest murder rate, school shootings are relatively rare. The incident has revived questions about how to deal with the persisting violence. And during his visit to the U.S., Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro reaffirmed he supports the intentions of the U.S. in Venezuela. But left-wing leaders in Brazil announced they will continue to defend peace, sovereignty, and self-determination across Latin America. According to experts, the change in Brazil's foreign policy for Latin America destroys nearly 150 years of diplomacy. The stance assumed by the government of Jair Bolsonaro, ratified by his visit to the United States, showed their submission to issues like Washington's meddling in Venezuela. Since the war with Paraguay, Brazil has had a position to try to maintain peace in our region. Brazil has supported dialogue, mediation of conflicts, and has not had a role to aggravate conflicts. Now, with this new position, they threaten the peace of our region and also the sovereignty of people. Because we are not only talking about Venezuela, of their sovereignty, of of the self-determination of its people, but we are also talking about oil, about the Amazon, of our biodiversity and water. 
Recently, lawmaker for the Social Christian Party, Eduardo Bolsonaro, qualified Cuba and Venezuela as slacks of humanity. For their part, left-wing leaders affirm that such words are only deserved by the current Brazilian president, who does not respect life, freedom or democracy, while preaching fascism and violence. We can back threats of any kind, mainly from those who come from North America, a region that has historically submitted our people, imposed dictators in our continent. We cannot allow threats of intervention, like the ones lobbied against Venezuela. The words of the President of the United States, of their political groups, of the representatives in Venezuela, like Mr. Juan Guaidó, those words are an affront to sovereignty. We defend peace and sovereignty and hope that the situation in Venezuela be decided by Venezuelans and not with foreign intervention. In the last months, politicians, lawmakers and representatives of social movements in Brazil have ratified their defense of Latin American unity and integration and their respect for the sovereignty of Venezuela. Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador has met with White House Representative Jared Kushner to discuss trade and immigration. Our correspondent Eduardo Martínez from Mexico City brings us the details. On Tuesday, Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador met with Jared Kushner, son-in-law and personal advisor to U.S. President Donald Trump. The two discussed issues of mutual interest, including ratification of the USMCA, that will replace the North American Trade Agreement. The new trade agreement is currently under debate in the Mexican Senate. AMLO and Kushner also talked about the more than $10 billion the United States has promised to invest in Central America to curb growing migration. The promised investment came last year as thousands of Central American migrants began grouping together in so-called migrant caravans and set off to enter the United States. AMLO also brought up the situation in Venezuela to Jared Kushner. In another news, Mexico's new ambassador to the U.S., Martha Barcena, emphasized close ties between the two countries during a stop in Arizona on Tuesday as she heads to Washington to take office. We thank Eduardo for that report. A vigil was held in Costa Rica for indigenous leader Sergio Rojas, who was killed after being shot 15 times. Rojas was a fierce defender of the territories of the Bribri de Salitre community. The UN High Commission for Human Rights in Costa Rica has called for an investigation. President Carlos Alvarado has condemned the murder. From the government, we completely condemn and reject this act of violence against the life of an indigenous leader. This is a tragic day for the Bribri people, for indigenous people, and for all of Costa Rica. Cuban doctors in Venezuela have been providing aid to all citizens for years. They say they will continue fulfilling their duty despite the, the lies spread by those who want to hurt both nations. This is one of more than 60 integrated health centers or CDIs in the Venezuelan state of Miranda. It's called the Humberto Fernandez Moran CDI. No, a mí no me obliga, no me han obligado nada. Nobody has forced me to do anything. I'm here for my baby's checkup. We are treated well here. We are here to work. We came to help our brothers and sisters. We can't just stop. Thousands of Venezuelans come here every day and are treated without any political or social distinction or favor. For these doctors, the only priority is to guarantee access and quality medical care. I was able to get the help I needed. The doctor checked my baby, they explained everything to me and will help my children through rehab so she can work again. I cannot complain about these health centers after all the help they gave us. Reni is one of the 24,000 Venezuelan community doctors trained in Cuba at the Latin American School of Medicine as part of the integral collaboration agreement between the two countries. He says his only concern is treating his patients. In my view, I have always said that we carry our own convictions with him. First of all, everything we do is with the goal of helping people. We don't preach any political ideology, whatever they may be. The Bolivarian Revolution has been helping the people, in particular those most in need, those who have never had anything, those who can't afford private clinics. That is why we are here. We're also teaching our own substitutes, because someday we'll have to leave, and it will be them who take over our duty. 
Today in Venezuela, there are more than 20,000 Cuban doctors who provide their services as an act of solidarity with a single mission to give health to the Venezuelan people. Laura Prada, Telesur Caracas. Jetty poking out over dried lake bed, boats stranded on the shore. These are the only reminders of Chile's Lake Acuelos, vibrant past that drought wiped from the map. Just an hour ride from the capital, Lake Acuelo was a thriving weekend getaway destination, boasting a depth of six meters. But water levels started to drop as recently as 2011, and the lake dried out completely by May of last year. Researchers say climate change and the high water demand of agriculture and tourism are some of the key causes behind Lake Acuelo's demise. There are activities such as agriculture and the development of real estate projects or tourism projects of the population that already exists around the Aculeo Lagoon, or secondary residences of people in the capital, etc. And they create quite an important water demand. We'll take a short break now. Join us again after this. Welcome fighters of the Syrian Democratic Forces are celebrating the fall of Baghouz, the last, Isla the last Islamic State group enclave. They have been dancing and shouting in celebration with their comrades. After the intense fighting, which lasted for weeks, fighters, mostly Kurdish people, are praising the liberation of the region. The joy is twofold. First, because we are going home to our families safely, thank God. And secondly, because we have won, we have eliminated the enemy, the terrorists. Indian Korea Jet Airways has grounded six aircraft, leaving only a third of its fleet in the air as it faces several crises. Pilots have threatened to walk, to walk out while a major shareholder is reportedly looking to offload its huge stake. India's number two career has been struggling with debt of over $1 billion, and it's been forced to ground 78 out of the 119 of its aircraft after failing to pay lenders and aircraft lessers. Israeli security forces have opened fire on protesting Palestinians in the occupied West Bank. The Palestinians were protesting against the killing of a teenager by Israeli soldiers. Omar Amin Abu Laila was shot dead by Israeli forces near Ramallah on Tuesday for allegedly resisting arrest. He was accused of carrying out an attack on Israeli soldiers. A Syrian refugee has transformed the story of his journey into a video game. In the game, 23-year-old Abdullah Adan Karam tells the story of his escape from war-torn Syria to his new home in Austria. Players can choose different routes and meet different fates while escaping. The difference when you read a book and play a game is that a book could share a perspective with you, which is amazing, but a game can switch your perspective. And with this switch is what we decided to make the game. To make whoever plays the game, uh, if, 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 this, if this person uh, has a certain um, political views on the world, it would just be uh, a switch to their perspective, where they see the world in a, in a different view, where it's still fun to play. It's still humorous. There's a humor in the game. We also want to to show, to be neutral, uh, sympathetic, and just uh, show the truth. And with that story, we've come to the end of this news brief. These and other stories, as always, find them on our website at telesurenglish.net. And also join us on social media. We're on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. For Telesur English, I am Estefania Bravo. Thank you for watching.